This is a video response to a request from one of my uh, biggest fans, Fraser, who is a year 12 student in London, and he wanted a video going through and explaining water crystallization. So, what is water crystallization? Well, many ionic compounds can actually contain water as an essential part of their crystal structure. It helps to stabilize the crystal that's formed. And this is kind of a little bit uh, tricky to think about, so I thought I'd show you a um, compound that um, I actually determined the structure of while I was at university. It's not important at all what the compound is, um, but it's actually a fluoride salt. So you can't actually see the cation here, but the negative ion is, flu is fluoride here, and it's stabilised by lots of interactions, but within the crystal structure, within every repeat unit, we have two water molecules. And you can see here, they are providing um, support, they're providing stabilisation for the fluoride ion um, using the delta positive um, polarity of this um, of the hydrogen atom here. Okay, so this water is actually inside the crystal. This is a solid, it's fixed. The water is not moving around, it's stuck in place, it's stabilizing the fluoride ion. And that is actually really, really common in ionic compounds. So for example, um, if you have copper sulfate, um, normally when you make it, if you let it evaporate nice and slowly, you get um, really nice blue crystals, really, um, really nice colored crystals, and that is actually hydrated copper sulfate. Um, it's perfectly stable like that, the, sort of the crystal itself is very, very stable, the water is going nowhere unless you actively force it out. And to do that, you're going to heat it up. Okay, and when you heat up your copper sulfate, the water will evaporate, um, the mass of the, uh, of the solid will go down, and anhydrous, or copper sulfate without water in it, is actually uh, white, which obviously would not look good on white paper. Okay. So this would be the hydrate crystal. You can drive off the water um, and form an anhydrous form. And when you do this, you will see the mass go down. And it actually goes down by um, the amount of water that evaporates, or the mass of water that evaporates, which means we can do some calculations. So let's just go through um, one example. Hopefully this will uh, clear up your request, Fraser. This question says, uh, zinc forms many different salts, including zinc sulfate, zinc chloride, and zinc fluoride. People who have a zinc deficiency can take hydrated zinc sulfate, ZnSO4, XH2O as a dietary supplement. What this means is, for every um, uh, for every mole of ZnSO4 we have in this crystal, we have an unknown number of moles of water, which is what we're going to work out. So a student heated 4.38 grams of hydrated zinc sulfate and obtained 2.46 grams of anhydrous zinc sulfate. Use this, these data to calculate the value of the integer x in ZnSO4 XH2O. I'm sure you're working. So the important thing is here is that we can't actually do anything with this number itself at the moment. Okay, That is for the hydrated zinc sulfate. We do not, not know what the MR of the hydrated salt is, so we cannot use that at the moment. What we can use is this. Okay, If we evaporate all the water, we are just going to have ZnSO4 on its own with no water. So we can use... Um, we can use that number there. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to use our equation moles equals mass over MR. Um, the mass of anhydrous zinc sulfate is 2.46. The MR of zinc sulfate we can calculate um, using the periodic table. So uh, doing Zn SO4, zinc has a mass of 65.4. Um, we've got one sulfur which has um, a atomic mass of 32, and we've got four oxygens, 4 times 16. So if I work this out, 2.46 divided by 16, I get an answer of um, 0.01. Two moles. So what that tells us is that um, after I've heated and driven off all the water, I've got 0 0.0152 moles of ZnSO4 left. Okay, and it looks like I'm a bit stuck here, but I'm actually not, because as I said up here, the difference in mass between the hydrate salt you start with and the salt, um, the anhydrous salt you have at the end, must be the mass of water. So in this case, mass of H2O is 
4.38 minus 2.46, which is going to be um, 1.92. We should have really done that without a calculator. Never mind. So what I can now do is work out the number of moles of water. Exactly the same thing again. Moles of water. Okay, it's going to be mass divided by MR. 1.92. The MR of water is 16 plus 2, which is 18. And this gives me an answer of um, not 0.1066. So, what is this telling me? What, well, this is telling me that for every 0.0152 moles of the ZNSO4 part I have, I've got 0.1066 of the water. So, to calculate the value of x, I simply need to work out the ratio of this to this. So, what I'm going to do is 0.1066 which is the number of moles of water, divided by 0.0152. And I get seven and a bit. Okay, so it's telling me that for every lot of ZNSO4, I've got seven lots of water, so X therefore must be seven. The formula of my compound is ZNSO4, seven H2O. Okay, in an exam, you will often be asked the question, um, explain how the uh, how the chemist could prove that all of the water had been evaporated. Um, in that case, all you would do is you would um, heat up your um, what you think is your anhydrous sam sample again, um, keep on heating it, and keep on measuring the mass until the mass does not go down anymore. If there's still water in that sample, um, more water would evaporate when you heat it, so the mass should go down further. Okay, so you just got to heat it to constant mass. 